CRTP stands for Curiously Recurring Template Pattern. This is a design pattern where a base class takes its own derived type as a generic parameter. In C++, this pattern can completely replace virtual polymorphism, and for us in Unity, it can give us a cleaner, safer, and more expressive way to structure gameplay using strong compile time typing. In this video, we'll start by explaining the pattern, and then we'll build a fully working state machine using CRTP as a practical example. Let's get into it. Let's start by building the smallest example of CRTP we possibly can in C-sharp. We can define an abstract base class that takes a generic parameter. The parameter will be the actual derived type, creating the recursive shape that CRTP relies on. The generic constraint says, T derived must inherit from this same base class. This is the core of the pattern. The derived type refers back to the base class that refers back to the derived type. Let's first declare a method that the derived class must implement. Then let's create another non-virtual method. We can cast this to the derived type and call its work method. Here, the cast is entirely optional, but it makes the relationship clear and guarantees that we're calling the derived class's implementation. So let's add a derived class that completes the CRTP cycle. We could have a concrete class called worker, and it passes itself into the base class. This completes the CRTP loop. Base wants t derived, and t derived is, in this case, worker. Now, we need to implement the work method that the base class needs. Let's just have a simple action here so that we can confirm that the pattern is working. Now, let's head over to my example mono behavior. Here, we could create an instance of the CRTP derived class. We can call the do work method, which calls into the derived work method. We still get polymorphic behavior but we have a cleaner API and stronger compile time guarantees. Now, this might seem a little strange, and I think the best thing to do is look at a practical example. So why don't we build a state machine using this pattern? Let's start with the most fundamental object in any state machine, a simple abstract base class that represents a character state in the machine. We can have an enter method that will run when the state first becomes active, an exit method to handle cleanup when the state is replaced with another one, and we can have a method that will run every frame while the state is active, receiving a delta time we can use for time-based updates. Now, to implement the pattern, we're going to create a generic version of our base state that extends the abstract version. The generic parameter t state will be the concrete state type. Our generic constraint enforces our pattern. T state must inherit from character state of type T state, which ties the derived class back into its own base class. Derived classes are going to implement their own logic for enter, exit, and tick. Then we can override the base enter method from the character state class. Here, we can optionally cast to the derived type to make the relationship explicit, giving us a clear, strongly typed way to call each state's concrete implementation. Then we can do exactly the same thing with the exit method. Here we'll just call on exit. Finally, we'll do the same thing for tick. Of course, this time we have a parameter, so we'll pass that into the on tick method. Okay, now let's build a simple state machine that will manage transitions. We can store a reference to the currently active state. Even though the states use generics, they all still derive from character state, so we can store them all as that base type. Then we can have a generic method that changes the current state to a new one. T state is the concrete state we want to transition into. The constraint ensures that every state we transition into follows the pattern correctly. Inside the method, if we have an active state, we run its exit method. Then we assign the new state as the current one, and then we can activate the new state by calling its enter method. Then let's also include a public method that will advance the state machine each frame. Inside, if a state is active, we call its tick method and pass in delta time. Well, that's our state machine ready. Let's make some real states. Maybe we want to have an idle state. Idle will inherit from the CRTP base and pass itself in as the type parameter. Then inside, we just need to implement our own versions of on enter. Maybe we just log something into the console. Then we need to implement on exit. And finally, we have to implement on tick. Here, we just do whatever we want to do during our idle state. Now, similarly, we could have a move state that passes itself into character state. The implementations will be basically the same. We need on enter, on exit, and we need an on tick method. Maybe just for interest's sake, we could set a watch variable in editor console pro just so that we can watch delta time. So let's come back to our example mono behavior and set up a little demo. 
Here, we can leave the existing worker, that's fine, but let's instantiate a new character state machine. Then we can start making instances of all the different states that we want. So we could have a new idle state and we could have a new move state. Our idle state isn't really doing much, so why don't we start the state machine by changing its state to move. Then we can create an update method. Every frame, we want to tick the state machine by passing in delta time. And that's really it. Let's jump back to Unity. I've added the example script onto a mono behavior, so I'm just going to control P. Right away, we can see the worker is doing work. We've entered the move state, and we can see delta time being output as a watch variable in the console. So that, in a nutshell, is the pattern. Hopefully, implementing a state machine helps it make sense. But why don't we take this just a little bit further by adding some generic transitions? First of all, I'm just going to point out that I added the public accessor to every class in the character state file. We'll need it for this next part. So let's have an abstract base class for all transitions. Each transition will expose an evaluate method to tell us whether the transition's condition is currently true. And then we can have an apply method that will perform the actual state change. We're going to keep this abstract so that the generic subclass can decide how to call the correct state machine change state of type T overload. Now let's declare a generic transition class. The type parameter tState will tell us the exact concrete state this transition leads to. We can strain it so the tState must be a CRTP-based state type. We'll store the condition as a func of type bool, and we can store a reference to the target state as well. We can set both of these through a constructor and just assign the target and the condition. Then we can override evaluate. This will just call the condition delegate and return the result. Then our apply method is going to perform the state switch. Because we know the exact T state at compile time, this call resolves to the correct generic change state of type T state method from the state machine with no runtime type checks. So now each transition holds everything it needs, a target state, a condition, and the logic to apply itself to the machine. Now, if I come over to my state machine file where we first defined our abstract base class of character state, here let's keep a private list of transitions that belong to this state. We could have a method that would register a transition with the current state. We can include a generic constraint to ensure that the transition always leads to a valid CRTP state, and we're storing it as the non-generic base type so that all transitions share one unified list. Then when we want to check to see if a transition is valid, we can just iterate through every transition owned by this state. For each transition, we call evaluate, which executes its delegate condition. If the condition returns true, we return that transition immediately. If no conditions were met, let's just return null. Now I'm just going to page up to the state machine itself. Here in our tick method, I'll comment out the existing logic. Instead, let's have a guard clause. If there's nothing to update, let's just return. Otherwise, let's ask the current state whether any of its transitions are ready. If a transition was triggered, we immediately apply it. Apply switches us to the target state using the correct generic change state of type T call. Once the transition is processed, we return so the new state takes over next frame. Now, if no transitions fired, we update the active state by calling its tick method. So how would this change in our example mono behavior? Well, for simplicity's sake, why don't we have a boolean is moving. Now we can define a transition from idle to move. This transition will trigger whenever the is moving boolean becomes true. The type tells the compiler exactly which state we're targeting, and the instance is the actual state we transition into. Now let's start our state machine in the idle state. And down in update, why don't we set the is moving variable as soon as there is any input. Let's go try it out. Control P right into play mode. You can see that we're in the idle state. Not much is going on. If I hit any key, you'll see that we exit idle and enter move, and we start to see the delta time watch variable again in the console. Now, some of you may have noticed a processor delegate in the example code, and that's another topic we're going to cover probably next week called generic processing chains. But this is all the time I've got for this week, unfortunately. You might also notice I've got some fancy progress bars going on. That's because my favorite progress bar asset has been deprecated from the asset store. So sometimes you just have to take matters into your own hands. But maybe that kind of shader work would be interesting for a video. Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, this is where I'm going to sign off. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to catch upcoming videos. Join us on Discord if you like. I'll put another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.